Good evening. Celebrate or hibernate? This is Paul Lennon with the 53rd installment of his uh, saga, Life Before, During and After the Legionaries of Christ, commenting on chapter 15 of my autobiography, latest version, so you can kind of uh, disregard the former versions. I've had a couple of versions of it already, as you know, Father Maciel, who art in bed, or Our Father, who art in bed. Uh, the very first version, which may still be available, has photographs, which make it a little bit more exciting. This latest version does not have photographs, and it still is lacking a good uh, index, which I'll add one of these days. Anyway, this is, uh, this is the section of, a book of uh, chapter 15, and it's called, the chapter is called Reflecting. Remember, every chapter starts with the, with the uh, letter R. Reflecting on sexual abuse in the Legion. Quote from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 9, verse 42. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. Celebrate or hibernate. In the light of the sexual scandals which have surrounded and uh, dogged the Legion, uh, the founder and then the Legion for years. They never seem like ending. Sexual scandal uh, of the leader which uh, surfaced 10 years, or which I learned about 10 years after leaving the Legion. I left Legion in 84 and I knew nothing about uh, the founder's sexual abuse at that time, nor did I for several years until I was contacted by one of Maciel's victims, uh, Jose Barba, PhD, uh, professor at the Itam University, Mexico City. During my nine-year training to be a legionary, and indeed during the remaining 14 years as a legionary priest, I have to remark and state that I was never aware of sexual improprieties of any kind in the order. Nor was I ever aware of being approached by a confer or superior in a sexually inappropriate way. Maybe I was not a good candidate for that kind of abuse. Because abusers, oh my God, they're so astute whatever. They look for any weakness they can find. And it's certainly not your fault. However, throughout all my eight years seminary training, I was never exposed to women, to the other sex. So I knew I was heterosexual, but I had no temptations. During all my eight years seminary training, 1961 to 1969, which would lead to my diaconate vow of celibacy, I was never outside the cloister walls of the legionary house on my own, and thus never really met an attractive woman. Apparently, in order to become a cook, which was a female cook in, in, in our communities, a woman had to be particularly ugly and old. It seems reasonable to conclude that my commitment to celibacy was, like everything else in the Legion formation system, an unprocessed, foregone conclusion. To parody Descartes, I assume, therefore, I am a celibate legionary. Of course, those old psychiatrists tell us never to assume. Because when you assume, you make an ass out of you and an ass out of me. I admit I felt confession, a fleeting attraction to that Venezuelan benefactress, accompanied by her rather provocative cavorting daughter, who was allowed to flit around the college in Rome sometime during my theology studies. 
late 60s. She must, uh, this lady, must have been contributing in no uncertain terms to the economy of the Legion. Her father Maciel to allow her to be in the legionary home. Although it was kind of strange to have a woman in the community with access to the semi-private areas of our house, all legionaries knew that when the founder was around, exceptions could be made to regular observance of the rules. Anyway, my infatuation with La Senora must have lasted all of 20 seconds. That is, while we were together in the elevator between floors at Via Aurelia 677. And there were only four floors. I may have been slightly troubled about it at the time. Looking back, it just proves that I had not been totally neutered by the Legion. Most legionaries, at least from my generation, will attest that the atmosphere surrounding us regarding sexuality and chastity was eerily antiseptic, reminding me of the smell uh, I, you would experience in the hospital in Dublin when I was a child. Whatever was in the air there, antiseptic ointment or or uh, ether, something was in the air which smelled of a hospital. So antiseptic, the legion was according to Maciel, and the myth he had created about the Legion for our consumption, that it was beyond reproach. Nuestro Padre sowed communal belief, communal belief that the Legion had been protected from impurity by a special gift from the Blessed Virgin Mary. Thus, purity was a given, and impure thoughts, feelings, uh, impulses or actions were unusual, out of place, and unexpected in the Legion. It was an extreme case of don't ask, don't tell. Basta por ahora. That's enough for today. Take care of yourselves. Until next time. All in.